Hi, LCC here is Detlef here, and this will be the sixth and final segment in the um, signaling series. Basically, what we've been doing is going through all the steps needed to signal a layout. And this last piece, we'll be talking about track circuits. What? And there will be other segments. I'm sure we're going to talk about signaling. I think there's some efficiencies and talking about how we can make things a little bit better. Um, but in the basic mode, you know, you've you know, between this uh, number one and number six here, you have all the pieces to program signals. Uh, but this last piece, I have to admit, has been very confusing uh, for me. It's been a bit of a confusing journey. So what I want to do today is talk about track circuits. Hopefully that'll help convey some um, of the value of them to you and make it easier for you to use them. So what is a track circuit? All right, a track circuit, basically the idea here is um, well, let me take a step back. When you're configuring signals, and you particularly have a set of signals that are approaching and interlocking, for instance, uh -huh. there's a lot of logic around that interlocking. You might have tracks coming together and breaking apart again and so on. And as you go through that, you have all these conditionals. And that's going to create um, a signal, a set of signal displays that you might have as an entrance to an interlocking. Well, if you want to take a step back and you want to put a signal ahead of that, to, you know, that say there's um, some track ahead of that, a block or two, and you want to warn people, you know, the, the trains that are coming to the interlocking that you're either going to see a stop or an uh, approach or a clear, um, that's difficult to do without creating a whole bunch of redundant logic. So the whole idea with track circuits is that instead of recreating the logic remotely for that advanced signal is that you just simply look at the signal output and you develop a speed that associates with that and like we talked before we're limiting it to three but you can make it all six or eight of them that are available but basically it just says hey guys when you approach a signal it's either going to be stop it's going to be an approach speed or it's going to be clear and all the other logic um, can reside back in that interlocking. All it has to do is look at those three. Uh -huh. I got a sketch here. Let me switch over to that and we can talk through that a little bit. Okay, so this is a pretty simple sketch. Let me get my uh, mug shot out of there. Um, basically, let's just say we have an interlock, a very simple one, just a switch or whatever. And like we have configured before, we have a two-headed signal. So we have all kinds of logic that drives that signal. That's what we've been working on up to now, right? Okay. But remember when we configured that signal, we also identified a track speed associated with each of those. And either they were, you know, green, which was clear, um, and then we had any of the combinations of a diverging, uh, which was uh, an approach, or we had stop. Red over red was a stop. And we identified those three options as a track speed. And a track circuit is constantly looking at those track speeds and creating, a, a, it's really a package of data that it says for, you know, right now this particular signal is at stop, approach, clear, or any of the other track circuit speeds that we uh, discussed. And then it sends it out on the LLC network. It just it broadcasts it. So any other signal anywhere else can read that as long as we identify, link those track circuits together, which is what we're going to do today. So I can read that this is a stop, an approach, or a clear as a, as a different signal. And I say, well, if the next signal is stop, you know, if the next signal track speed equals stop, then display, I would say, approach, right? And if the next track, uh, next signal speed is clear, then we would display um, clear here as well. Wow. What this does is if there's tons of logic back here that develops and we re recall that there was um, particularly uh, for this one there was a couple options where we would have had an approach speed that would have um, you know slowed things down so we want to convey that over here to the other signal. I guess for approach you really don't for just uh, that would still be clear on this side but it could become more complex pretty quickly right. So anyways all that to say We've got um, then logic over here that sends an a bunch of information. It gets read, and then you can associate it. Hmm. All right. Okay. So let's take a look at the layout that we have and um, how we're going to implement that. I love it. So starting from a general overview, um, we have our two nodes right here. 
we have a BOD4CP. Um, this node here and this BOD combined are running the two signals plus all the detection and the turnout plus this double-headed signal over here. But if I back out, I've added a, a signal all the way here over to the left and then all the way over here to the right. And I'm going to call those distant signals, but they could just as easily be a block signal or something else that's just upstream, if you will, of whatever this is, uh, this, this particular junction is. And then I've added a new uh, signal LCC here. And its only purpose, you can see only a little part of it's being used, two sets of blocks, is to drive these two distant signals. And I think the whole idea here is that I want to demonstrate that it doesn't even have to be on the same node. These distant signals are going to be largely driven by the track circuits that we see. So the track circuits are going to indicate um, you know what the situation is at the switch itself and then uh, respond accordingly. Uh, the one exception is if the track it's uh, you know that that signal is on is directly occupied and then we're just simply checking for occupancy so it'll act like a block signal so it'll be a block signal with track circuits how's that for a description all right i hope that makes sense so um with that understanding oh by the way disregard the fact that these are lighting up as red they're not configured basically i just set up the masks like i've done in some previous videos um, I just wanted to make sure that that's ready to go so we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about that. Um, so they're not being driven by any logic right now. They're just defaulting to red. All right, let's go back and configure these things with track circuits. And here we are to our favorite screen, the configuration dialogs. Oh, yeah. Uh, just to show an overview of the network, most of the work that we've done to date, in fact, all of it that you've seen on this video series is on node 0109 and uh, added this 01A9 node, ironically, with the same last number, just to keep things confusing here, um, added node for two added signals. So this is for the distant signals. So if we open up the configuration dialog like we see right here, we're just going to go ahead. I've already pre-configured out the masts. Uh, you can see that in a previous video, what it takes to do that. There's nothing too exciting about that. Conditionals are still blank, though, completely blank. So we will use the same logic, uh, or we'll start with scratch logic, but we we'll use the same approach to logic like we do before. Um, I'm going to go ahead. These are going to be pretty simple. So I'm only going to do up to logic 5, and I'm going to do this. Uh, well, which signal should we do first? Let's pull up our little interface diagram here. How about the eastbound, since that's what it came up with? Signal 2, eastbound, distant. Signal 2, eastbound, distant. And... Um, we're just simply going to call this uh, the logic alert. Remember, we want to do that just to make sure that we'll um, not have any issues with the logic. Track speed, uh, I think we decided that we're going to... Um, yeah, we weren't going to even change any of this. We'll just go here to um, exit, send a group, and send an exit group on both of these. And the action will be immediately to do this logic alert. So regardless, if it ever gets to this place here, um, we'll just save that. Okay, so that's a uh, logic alert. So first one, logic one, is just simply if the block is um, And that's not going to be anything special. This is something that you saw in the previous videos. Track speed is still stop. Um, if the block is occupied, let's look at the relevant events. Uh, we're going to make that, I believe that's the right block for that. Copy, paste. And it's only on the V1. If we only have, if anything's in that block, we'll be all right. We're not going to use V2, variable 2. So if it's true, Immediately, we're going to send the red stop. Okay, so that's the only case where we're going to have a stop signal. You really don't need stop for track circuits because basically, um, if you have something in the block, there's nothing to, there's no track circuits to need. This basically turns the block red if something's in that block, right? Okay, now that we have that 
condition um, configured, basically just a stop signal, I want to use track circuits for the other two options. In other words, my other two choices are I want to have an approach for it going on a diverging, and I want to have it clear if it's um, going straight through. Okay, that's what I'd like to get to. So to do that, before we start programming here, let's go back to um, this whole setup here. And there's a section called track circuits. So in this node, I can look at up to eight different track circuits. Remember my little sketch that showed the uh, that I could look at different track circuits that are out there on the LCC network. We just have to find the ones that we want. So if I go back to my configuration dialog for the other node that I had, 0109, and that masked 2SEA, remember the, uh, the sketch we looked at when we configured this thing? That's that home signal that, uh, if we can call it that, the double-headed signal, it's eastbound. We're right now configuring 2ED here. So I want this signal to look at 2EA to drive some of the indication here. So if I look at signal 2EA, I don't know if you noticed it, but if you go under mass 3 signal 2EA, we redefine that signal name. Right below it, it says track circuit link address, copy and paste. It's a read-only thing. So if I copy this, and I want to put in here, this is signal 2EA, that's where it's coming from and I paste it in here, now on this node, anytime I refer to circuit one, track circuit, circuit one, it's looking at this particular signal. And in fact, it is looking at these rule names. Whatever we put in here, stop. It'll look at all eight of these conditions, but we're only using three, remember. But it actually transmits all eight of these over to this new node here. So I'm going to go ahead and write these guys, save these changes. Now when I go back to my conditionals up here, logic 2. So the block I occupied gives me a red, right? We decided that already. For logic 2, I want to have signal 2e distance approach. Okay. And um, so a group, yep, we got that group, that's right. Source is track circuit one. I guess I already had that set up, but normally this is set at variables. Remember how we normally set it? I'm going to move it over to track circuit one. We define track at circuit one below. That's linked over here to this particular signal. And for track speed stop over at signal two, S2EA, uh -huh. I want, and you don't even have to mess with these variables, it's already read it, and we only need V1, okay? So it's already taken care of it. Just by saying source is track circuit one, and I say when it's in the stop condition, I scroll down here, send an ex exit group, that's fine. Evaluate next, that's fine. So when it's true, that works. The condition will be immediately, I want to display, what did we say? An amber. So I go back to my signal, S2, where's my signal? S2ED. And the approach is going to be this particular paste. I'm going to save all these changes. Similarly, let's go do logic three. Yeah, signal two, eastbound distant. I don't want it blocked. I want it part of the group on uh, the variable change. But instead of using a variable, I'm going to look at track circuit one. And this time, if it's approach, remember, that was an option. I'm going to ignore these. You don't need the variables. I'm only looking at V1. You can add other logic if you want to, but we don't need it. For clear, so we have blocks occupied. We're going to have the approach or if it's clear. That's all we need to know. So circuit one, this time it's going to be looking for clear. Um, apologize for some of the old data in there. I was playing with it a little bit. What? And then immediately we're going to give it, if it's clear, it'll get a clear signal. So then let's go ahead and down here, copy and paste that in. So let's go ahead and um, save all this, reboot it, and we'll check it on the tracks itself. Okay, so we have red here with the occupied block, which makes sense. 
and it's looking down the track, seeing it's diverging. Now, if I remove the car, let's see what we get. Ah! Oh. Okay, that makes sense. So that's what we talked about. Whoops. Why am I getting a flashing? Something's not right. Okay, so I kind of goofed here. Um, what I did was I had set up conditionals for the block occupied uh -huh. and the approach. I only looked at if the track speed was at stop and if the track speed in this particular case was clear. But what if the track speed was an approach track speed? It never checked for that. Okay, okay, okay. And it went over to the logic alert. So my little uh, logic alert system worked correctly. But remember, I think we talked about the option of I wanted to have it on approach show both either, um, you know, if the track is stopped or an approach. I want people to slow down beforehand. So what I want to do is actually do V1 or V2. Um, trigger 2 and variable change. This time we're going to go back to track circuit 1 as well. And this time for speed, I'm going to do the approach speed. So we're going to write all that. We don't care about these things. So if it's either a stop or an approach, we should see that distance signal go to yellow. So I'm going to save all the changes. I'm going to reboot. And let's go back out to the layout and see if we can get this to work. Look at that. Voila. So with an amber, which is an approach indication here, I'm getting my approach here. Let me throw it into... And if we're on a through, uh, on a clear, we got clear on the approach, on the uh, distance signal. Let me go ahead and put our car back on. It's got the detection going. And for that, sure enough, we got red. It's dropping to red. But note the distance signal, now that it's um, behaving correctly, it's showing an approach to let Someone know you got to slow down to stop at the next signal. And just for grins, I'm going to go ahead and try this. Let's see if everything follows through. There we go. Look at that. On the siding, it's blocked, and it says an approach. I can throw it back to main, and everything should go back to green. There we go. Look at that. It's all working. Pretty neat. I'm going to go ahead and configure the other side, but I think you got enough to do it on your own. That's it for today. Bye.